Amen. So our text today is chapter 5, as Lloyd shared uh, from Acts. And and if you've been with us, you know this story. It's a story about Peter and John. Peter and John were... (laughs) Peter and John were... Oh, excellent. There we go. Okay. <laughs> the, the, that's what God called us to be. And they knew that. Peter and John knew that Jesus was, had risen from the dead. And they were going out and telling people, Jesus actually lives. He, he lives. He rose from the dead and he lives. And he's, they were telling people left and right. And the Sanhedrin said, you've got to stop doing that. They told us that last week in, in Acts 4. And God gave them the ability and the faith to see a guy who was right begging along the street and they said get up and walk and what did he do he got up and walked and the Sanhedrin said we got to stop these guys we got to make sure this doesn't happen we got to shut this down and I mean, they were afraid of two things first of all they were afraid of their own jobs they were the political leaders and these guys are turning everything on its head the Sanhedrin didn't believe in resurrection and they're talking about Jesus being risen from the dead and and certainly when these guys got when this guy got healed the whole town is talking about it and they're nuts about it because that should be them They should be fussing about us and the way we bring God to them, right? Isn't that what they're supposed to do? And then the other thing that they're worried about was Rome. This is an occupied territory and Rome would crush anybody that had any kind of rebellion. And and so they were concerned that Rome was going to come in and crush all the Jews because of this crazy talk about resurrection. And that's where we pick up today in our story. Acts 15. Then Acts 5 says, Then the high priest took action. He and all who were with him, that is the sect of Sadducees, being filled with jealousy, I told you they were jealous, arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But, But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about his life. Today, we're going to study these apostles and what they say in these few lines here and what, and three principles that are going to come out of this. When you experience bold uh, obedience, there are three things that are going to happen, and we're going to talk about those today. Bold obedience, first, usually results in opposition. Oh, goody. Uh, you know, when we boldly obey God, some of the, something normally happens. Somebody read verse 18 for me. Anybody have enough light that they can they get their Bible out? One Bible, that's all I need. One Bible. Perfect. Thank you. Is it up on the screen? Thank you, Gloria. Now get your Bible out. <laughs> They arrested the apostles and put them in public jail. Does this sound familiar? What happened in Acts 4? They arrested the apostles and they put them in jail. Here they are again. And why? This is the second time that they've been put in jail in a very short time. The problem is, in our Christian world, we're thinking, oh, that's just not right. And they, These are great guys. They shouldn't have to go to jail for what they believe. That's kind of the way we even think, right? The reality is, though, when you both obey God, you'll face opposition. And here's what you need to know when that opposition is there. First of all, if you're not ready to face the opposition for your obedience, then you're not ready to be used by God. Ouch. In other words, you need to know when you start following God, there's going to be something coming back at you, trying to stop that from happening. Just like the, the, the Sadducees and, and the Sanhedrin didn't want this thing to go anywhere, so does that opposing force. I absolutely believe there is an opposing force to the will of God in this world. And it, when you start obeying God... You're going to get pushback, as we call it in our church office. We call it Monday morning pushback. Now, a whole congregation of people right now are considering being bold for God. So what do you think is going to happen? There's going to be opposition, right? There's going to be things coming up. And, and, and that's the way it happens. People are already being bold and obediently responding to God's words. And so the opposition is upon us. And God still wants us to be bold. Even when those things happen, because the world is watching, 
You know, we can't just sit here and get all psyched up on Sunday morning and go out and say, I'm going to be bold and let go. We've got to keep going, even when there's pushback. And if you're not ready to face that for your your obedience to God, then you're not ready to be used. Because when you obey God, opposition comes. My oppositions, you know, I've had lots in my life, I can tell you. I think you heard me tell before, the day I quit my job and answered my call to ministry, that was a bold obedience on my part. And I pulled out of the parking lot and got about five miles down the road and the transmission quit in my car. No job, no transmission. Great start! But God worked through it. You know, God was there and and knew I had a a way to be there. Then I went to, uh, I had to, I went to uh, college uh, at Duke University at 40 years of age. And uh, it's the youngest seminary in the entire Methodist connection. So there's this 40-year-old guy. And yes, that was several years ago. And yes, I colored my hair last night. That was a long time ago. And, but, uh, and getting funding at school when you're 40 years old, other than the Methodist Education Fund, which is a great gift that our church does, there were no grants for 40-year-old and a young... There was nothing. And so I... But God found a way. God used me, and I ended up in churches and got so much more experience than I could ever imagine because I went ahead and got, left. But boy, I can remember thinking when that stuff came up... Maybe I should just go back to Dun & Bradstreet and get my job back selling yellow pages with Donley directories. That was the best job I ever had in my life, and I walked away from it. And every time I obey, there's been opposition in my life. We obeyed as a church last year, and we took more than we ever had at Room in the Inn each night. You remember? We had we used to take about 28, and we, we said, well, wait, we can fit some more people in here. And the pastor said, no, we got to stop. We remember it's supposed to stop 28. But they didn't listen. It went on, even though I said it. And there was lots of ways that we could have said, no, that's not good. But we started t- taking in as many people as we possibly could and continue to do that. Even though there was opposition, we t- kept doing it. And, and what happened when we did that? Anybody remember? The oven blew up. Opposition. I don't think the oven, I think the oven waited for this moment. (laughs) That oven is no longer with us, and we have a godly oven now. (laughs) Then there's the parking lot. Seven years ago, when I came into the leadership of this church, I said, this has got to change. People are, there's not enough parking here. And if there's not enough parking, people aren't going to come. And, I, and back then, I said, build it and they will come. Kind of like Field of Dreams. And everyone said, with what? Because <laughs> we were broke and then some. And yet, we kept going. And it's taken seven years. And I thought about this this week. And you can think about seven years as being a really long time. Or you can think about it being a divine number. Because if you look in the Bible, you'll learn that the number seven. Anybody know what it means? Completion. What's the other meaning? Divine perfection and completion. And that's what our parking lot's going to be. Yay! And that's the way we've got to look at when there's opposition there. It wasn't seven years. It was completion and divine perfection at the end of it because God had his hand in it. We didn't know how we were going to pay for it. Every time something happened along the way, and we've seen some of that, uh, that opposition come up lately, but it happens. It works. And, but i got to tell you, if you start obeying today, and I know some of you have been obeying a long time, you already know this. If you, God speaks to you today and gives you something to do, I promise you there's going to be probably be obedience. I mean, opposition there at the same time as the obedience. So be aware of that and be ready for it. I don't know what it is or what it will be for you. You figure it out along the way. 
That's what we've got to do. And, and, and if you're tired of what you're going through, you just have to stick with it. You know, if you're, if you're in debt and you need to change your life because, because of that debt, you know, maybe it means driving not the newest car in the world, but driving an old clunker or something like that. You've got to start doing those kind of things so you can be ready because that's the opposition that's in your way. Do not let money ever be an opposition for you. And, and to, set, uh, to understand that God God's going to change you. So it may be about debt. Or it may be that you, like I had to do, have to change and get a whole new job. Sarah Beth Priest was sitting here a few years ago when we were talking about refocusing and getting ourselves back in line. And the first thing we did is, how has God worked in my life?